Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Um, today we are delving into a heavy topic so much so that I need a drink for my throat. And secondly, that this is a topic that I'm covering for the second time on this channel, but um, it never gets old and really I'm learning and I still am in the phase of learning this topic. So uh, uh, it's definitely worth uh, revisiting every now and then. We are going to talk about IQPs again and in particular even Within that topic, we are exclusively going to look in this video at the d4, d5 push, the breakthrough with the IQP when the isolated queen's pawn. I don't know when I'm recording, my nose is always itchy. Um, is not blockaded. And the reason why I, I wanted to make a video about this is actually very selfish. And that is, is that about two weeks ago, I played a series of blitz games against this lovely dude um, called Yatsov. Now, what is his name? Yeah, Yats, Yatsov Horowitz, some, uh, no, uh, I don't know, man, wait, I could actually look it up. He's a really, really good player, Yatsov Norovitz, that's right, um, that's, that's the dude from uh, the US. Um, very, very good Blitz player, remarkably awesome dude, plays very, very strong chess, very, very sharp tactically, calculates really well. But occasionally has a tendency to be a little bit of a pawn, pawn grabber. Anyway, um, he beat me very, very soundly. Um, he's a solid 2800 player. But um, there was something, actually a lot to take away from that Blitz match. And I always tell you that look upon your Blitz games as a source of learning material, never as a, a, a goal, like you are working towards being good at blitz or the goal of your blitz match is to you know win and get to whatever rating now nah, stuff that your goal with blitz is to somehow inform your long time control games blitz like i said it many times before in my opinion uh is a means to an end and uh it's basically an excellent training tool and i used it as such and we again for the second or third time with this guy had a number of games in this variation in the pan of where black drops back to f6 and it's a very rare variation and in my opinion not even the best move here so after castles castles 96 rookie one uh ever since botvinny kalekine which i have posted on this channel we know that b6 essentially loses to takes takes bishop b5 queen a4 massive positional pressure and so black needs to release the tension by either taking or dropping back and that's what yatsov did to me on multiple occasions he dropped back to f6 i castled castled rookie one knight c6 all good a3 now this move was played in some games and wasn't repeated in some others I also tried bishop g5. Later on I figured out that this move actually is nowhere near as good as I thought originally it was. Because many times when I'm playing for d5 break, when they take with the knight there is this awkward extra trade available for black as a result of the bishop being out on g5. I once defeated this guy breathtakingly beautifully in this line b6, d5, knight a5. Bishop b5, knight takes d5, and queen takes d5. Boy, oh boy, what a queen saccharine. Or that is, and if ed, bishop takes e7, queen c7 takes the rock, and when the king takes back its mate on e8, and so I have got too much material, white wins. But as much as I loved doing this to him, um, I very quickly realized, and so did he, that after bishop b5, <coughs> Black has got a6 first. And this position is not really that great. There is one last trick in it. And that is that after bishop d3, if they take with the knight, that is an instant loss. Because the bishop takes knight takes and Greek gift. And after takes knight g5, king back, queen h5, the game is over. And so they need to come up with the king to g6. But after queen g4, uh, this attack breaks through by white. So what they need to do is to play a preparatory h6 first. And after this black, as a matter of fact, is already uh, looking quite good or not. Wow. Huh. Wowzers. Relevations. Or revelations, rather. 
English is hard. Wow, the engine just found D6. I thought that I have analyzed it deep enough so that I could uh, come and have a chat with you guys about this and clearly not the case. So hold on a tick. So that means that this whole idea is still sound. Oh no, okay. No, I'm confused now because the computer also recommends H6 in this position. Um, and maybe this will be the way to go for black because here black best is take stakes 95. And um, I don't really believe that white has got too much here to write home about with the two knights versus the two bishops when the position is about to crack open. Maybe a tiny edge, but H6 is only. So apparently a6, bishop d3, h6, d6 is very nasty. The idea is that if queen takes, bishop takes, the bishop can't take back because of the check. And if g takes and after queen d2, we have got a tremendous attack with knight e4 incoming against the weak king. Wow. That is awesome, man. And if bishop takes... Um, then we still have bishop takes, and if queen takes, that wins because knight e4, knight d6, same story. And so the g has to take back, and then things are messy again, but I believe that white has got plenty of compensation against the weak king. So this is still something to consider, but uh, I didn't realize that there was this possibility. I think my computer is very slow because there are multiple engines open. And so I started digging. And I thought that, okay, so if my bishop on g5 is the problem, then I perhaps should play a3, which is a very useful move in almost all IQP positions, because black usually wants to do this maneuver, but it also helps to tuck my bishop away, especially in case of a6, b5, which they do do all the time in this setup. And now, if he does b6, I now have d5. And the big difference is, is that if they go knight a5, I drop back to a2. And now if the mass, masses of trades take place after queen d5, there is no good way for black to trade off everything. Because if queen takes d5, then bishop takes d5 and rook bishop hanging. This is almost always the idea with the d5 breakthrough in these IQPs that basically you crack the position open and your better developed pieces are going to do the damage. And so almost forcingly, they have to play here bishop e6, and after queen d8, rook d8, bishop e6, pawn takes back. This is an endgame that I would play any day of the week. It may not be winning, but um, it looks very, very promising for white with that extra pawn. Looks like bishop g5 is forced. Bishop takes g5, knight takes g5, knight b3 is an engine line. But um, yeah, undoubtedly white has an edge here. Whether it's sufficient to win or not, it's anybody's guess, but this is how opening theory usually develops. And um, if I really did my homework correctly, by the way, what I would do now is that I would open up my opening file on this uh, opening and I would enter this analysis into it. That is how I utilize all the learning that I took away from this Blitz game and putting it into use by adding it into my opening file. You may ask, what if I don't have an opening file? You should have an opening file about your openings um, because it's in impossible to keep track of all your openings if they are not written somewhere and uh, chess-based files um, or, you know, you can develop your opening repertoire at multiple ways. I mean, multiple ways is definitely the way to go. Anyway, so d5 was the, the big revelation that I needed to do. And after knight a5 takes, 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 takes. Um, yeah, I did go into the end game. So I think I covered everything. Is there anything else I didn't mention? Oh yeah, the instant take. Take, 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 and queen takes is another very typical motif. And now if queen takes, then bishop takes and it's hanging two pieces, white is winning. So in this position, in fact, black needs to play bishop b7. And this is another motive that I really want you to remember if you play this uh, opening or this structure, queen h5. The queen is immensely strong on h5. In the absence of a knight on f6, it's very effectively attacking two ways against the king. And because of there are um, two minor pieces tucked away on the queen side by black, the attack by white here has uh, quite large potential. 
So one of the main learnings from this game, once again, is that probably A3 is one of the best moves I can play here with the idea of D5. I'm going to show you a couple of other games that I played against uh, Yatov, uh, just to see how these games unfolded. That was another, oopsies, sorry, wrong button. Another piece of analysis there. Tick, 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 Rook e1, knight c6. So I tried bishop g5 and then d5. So this actually occurred. Um, and once again, bishop d3 here is remarkably powerful. Um, but I want to show you something very interesting. So he played in knight d5, which is instantly losing again to the bishop takes bishop h7 stuff. Very, very interesting. But I thought I had a piece of analysis here that I wanted to share with you earlier on. No, 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 that's not it. Okay, moving on, next. Uh, oh, that's that's the one, that's the one. Okay, let's start again. So Panov takes d5, bishop c4, knight back, rook e1, knight c6, bishop g5, still the same. And so, because if I didn't see the um, Greek gift, I tried a3 here and queen d3. Now with this, my idea was, and this is when you use, by the way, also previous and prior knowledge um, that I wanted to stir the position towards, believe it or not, a C3 Sicilian. Because I remember from playing this on the black side, I used to play this variation. Take, take, knight C6, knight C3, queen D6, bishop D3, bishop E7, castles, oopsie daisy, castles, a3, b6, queen e2, bishop b7, rook d1, and white plans to go back, queen d3, and just be a pest. And so I thought, okay, I will try to play something like this. And you can see that the main skeleton of the position is almost identical. And he played it queen d6, which as you can see by the engine, is a bad move. And I failed to utilize it. But basically, if there was one learning that you should take away from this lesson is, is that if the d5 square is not blockaded in, in front of the IQP, at every given moment, you must look at the consequences of d5. Every given moment. And it's just uh, a brilliant move here too. Uh, if ed, 90, 90, and uh, we have got the very, very annoying pin. And note this extra trick that if they take the bishop, again, we have bishop f7 winning the queen. Absolutely awesome stuff. And something like rook d8, rook d1, bishop takes, knight takes is what tends to happen when things go brilliantly well from our point of view. When these two pieces massively outmuscle these two guys. Right? These two dominating in the attack, mate threat there, and none of these guys do anything. So that's, that's great stuff. And uh, if he takes with knight, then uh, knight takes, e takes, yeah, the same story. Bishop takes d5 when we're doing really well. And if they play knight a5, then bishop drops back. And this is a motif that I missed a lot in the game. Um, I thought I did. Knight takes. Knight takes, bishop takes. Uh, bishop takes and we win because e7 is too loose. And the rook is hanging. Wowzers, man. This is so rich. Like, I'm already regretting that um, I haven't done even more research so that I could deliver this material even better to you. But, um, yeah, this is what it is. Um, so, yeah, look out for the d5 break. I didn't do it. I played rook d1. Mistake. He plays rook d8. And again, d5 wins. We are going to essentially repeat the previous variations. I instead went bishop a2, which is stock standard, but bad because it's not the best move. And now he went on this very interesting trickery with knight g4. And the idea is to take here and if I take, then uh, try to mate me down on h2. But I figured out that it was not quite accurate. Bishop b1, my mate first. And I played knight e4, apparently wrong. Queen d2 was the right move to shut the queen down next. 94, queen went back. I played h3. And here he got a bit too fancy with this knight takes d4. Uh, with the idea of if I take, then uh, he takes, takes. And then bishop takes g5 and I can't take because I'm pinned. 
but it's not sound. I took 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 allowed the check king f1 and I had bishop d3 here. Like these matches were so intense, man. Like imagine calculating all this in a three minute game. Take stakes, knight e5, and I just win by knight f6 check. Exposing this if need be, and also against king g7, I will take the rook with check, king takes rook e5, and the knight d7 check wins the queen. Take, 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 take. I was quite proud of this actually, and here instead of taking the rook, I played knight g4, which is a far stronger move, because it hits the queen, and upon the queen's entry, we don't take, no, 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 check, checkmate, thank you very much. Slightly off topic, but I wanted to show you this. Okay, um, next. Same story. Okay, let's have a look at this. Knight f6 again, a3 again, queen d3 again, bishop b3. I forgot to turn on the analysis board for this one. I don't know which game this is. Oh, this is such a beauty. He defeated me so, so beautifully here. So queen d6 mistake again, bishop c2, rook d8. And here again, I'm missing d5. This is actually the best d5 I wanted to show you. Like, ever since I have seen the game Smyslov Karpov, which once again is in the previous d4, d5 video, I thought that I have always been on the lookout for d5s, and the number of times I missed this dang move in this mini-match against Yatsov is just insane. The idea is beautiful. Takes, bishop g5, g6. And that was exactly the, the, the Karpov Smyslov game, but with the rook still here and the queen at home. And if you imagine that position, then rook takes e7 wins, because when the queen takes it, then I have knight d5. And I'm hitting uh, queen and uh, knight. But now I can't do that, because if I take queen takes, and knight d5, he can sack with rook d5. And so I'm like, bugger, I can't do this. But of course I can. The whole point is that I just need to play knight b5 here, kicking the queen out. And when the queen drops back to d7, now I can take, queen takes, and after rook e1, we're going to win the f6 knight. That's a breathtaking variation. Absolute beauty. Check this out again. So d5, instead of the silly bishop g5, knight can't take because there is mate on h7, so has to take. Bishop g5, now check, check uh, sorry, take checkmate is not holdable in any other way than g6. 94 loses to takes, 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 and the mate is still on, but now e7 is hanging as well. And so he has to play g6, and that's when the carnage kicks in. Knight b5, queen d7, and bang. If knight takes, we pick off the bishop. If queen takes, rook e1. So that's the thing that I missed in this game. And boy, look at how he defeated me. It was awesome. Um... Going back, so bishop c I went bishop g5, he took on d4. I mean, two exclamation marks, really. I hung a pawn. <laughs> like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Knight takes, queen takes, queen h3. Trying to sell some cheapies on h7. Take, take, take. And I was hoping that I was going to sell some trickery here. I mean, I knew that I objectively was lost. This is not sufficient enough. But hardly did I execute my move queen h6. Did he land his queen on here? baby and he told me that i might get on my bike in this case because after king takes he has got knight g4 check picking of the queen extra piece and who the boss title goes to yatsovn um easily okay is there anything else no um this was already slightly different so we did a he, he tried the semi tarash setup with queen there, knight d7. I'll show you this because the end was beautiful, but it's a bit off topic because it's not about d5. Um, he won a pawn and then he got a bit too cocky. And here I had a beautiful combination. I don't know if it's sound or not, but after this, man, look at that. So I played queen h5 and on the take I took on e6. Actually, I want to know if this was correct or not because I was very proud of this. I mean, we're talking about three minute chess, right? So uh, to come up with an idea like that from someone like me, it takes quite a bit of calculation. Wow, it's correct. Takes, takes. Boomski, baby. I'm very, very proud of this. And the idea was that if he took, then I have got 
and everything drops with check, 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 and check. And now rook has to block, check, and I took. And now d7 is hanging. Um, mates, various kinds of mate threats are in the air. He went knight of fate, blundering into mate in one, which I nearly missed actually. I, it was on stream, and I kept on talking about how I'm going to go check and blind, and blind, and I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's mate there. And now, last but not least, um, oh no, there is another one here. Yeah, all right, have a look at this. Went again for the same story. Should have played a3, really, but it's not a biggie. Knight b4, queen back, and he should have played knight d5. Again, immediately blocking the isolated pawn. Instead, he goes rook c8. You won't believe what the winning move is that I'm missing here. d5. Go d5, folks. And it's easy. If they take you, you take that and that hangs. Oops. If they take knight, knight takes. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Knight takes. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Rook takes. It's a lot of calculation, but most of it is just basic. Tuck, 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 tuck. And then in the end you evaluate. So yet again, I missed the winning uh, d5 instead play knight d5, and then I <laughs> that was actually insane. Here he went rook c4, knight c4, queen d5, triple attack. Check that out, man. Like you would think it's bound to win for black, but in fact I have a triple defense. And now the rook covers this, this, and the queen covers that. Better still, after the seemingly winning bishop a6, I had uh, actually this tactic. I was very, very proud of finding this too in a three-minute blitz game. Instant queen d5 was uh, queen e5 was also good. Knight b6. The idea being that if they take here, I take and the queen, and then I take the bishop. Whereas if the queen goes, I take the bishop, and if the queen goes to b7, I play queen e5. And now he can't take on b6 without losing f6. And I actually managed to lose this game later on uh, because of time travel. Yeah, and I've got flagged. So, last but not least, guys, on this topic, um, I'm going to bring you another classic. And that is a Spassky game. One of the most underrated world champions out there. Spassky Antonov. Antonov. Queen's Gambit accepted, another major, major opening where we have IQP and Knight B4 here is a very famous losing move and I don't think you will be surprised to figure out that the win is D5. Knight takes D5, Bishop G5 and now boy oh boy, like look at how many pins pinned, the pawn is pinned to the king and the knight is pinned to the queen. Good luck Chuck surviving this. Total mess. Bishop e7 is more or less forced. And uh, Spassky mopped it up like an absolute legend. Bishop takes. Know that the bishop can't take because it loses the piece. Bishop, uh, sorry, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, pawn takes. Knight d4. Center. En route to here or here. King f8. Knight f5. Now the threat is rook d5. And Amtomov falls for it. Rook d5 takes check. Queen f6 on your bike, mate, queen, see ya. So, short summary of a very, very messy video this time is that when your IQP is not blockaded, be constantly on the lookout for d4, d5 breaks. Usually they come with extensive calculations and very long lines, but more often than not, they are worth investing your time and energy because usually those breakthroughs uh, grant white um, a massive advantage. So that's going to be it from me for today, folks. Uh, take care and I will be back with more soon. Thank you. Bye.